on page 198, they show a cross that's a little bit more involved than the ones we've been doing. And um, basically, Mendel took a true breeding tall plant with green pods. So big T means tall, and big G means green. And he crossed it with a short plant with yellow pods. So little T means short, and little G means yellow. So he's considering two traits. You know, plants have lots of traits. He's just going to consider two of them. So each plant has a pair of genes, a pair of alleles for height, and a pair of alleles for pod color. And so this plant got two genes for tallness from its folks and two genes for green from its folks. And this plant got two genes for short and two genes for yellow. Every plant gets two genes for each trait. One came from the dad and one came from the mom. So it gets one pair of alleles, alleles for the color and then what's the other one? Shape of the pod. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry, color of the pod and height. Okay. T is height, G is color of the pod. Now when you cross these two, they're going to make sperms and eggs. Here's the sperm and there's the egg. The sperm will get one of each letter from each pair of genes. You'll pay attention here, this is not easy. So one of those two goes in the sperm. Does it matter which one it is? No. Got to be the big T. And one of those two goes in the sperm, big G. And one of those two goes in the egg, little T. And one of those two goes in the egg, little G. So when this sperm fertilizes this egg, you end up with an individual that's big T, little t, big G, little g. There's the new individual. All of the kids of this are going to be tall with green pods. And that's what they're showing at the top there. That's what they're showing Ella, right there. So that's the, poss that's the only possible gamete for this one is big T, big G, and the only possible gamete for this one is little t, little g. And so there's what you get when those gametes combine. Now, I drew a, I drew a sperm with a tail, but obviously, uh, well, you might not know, plants don't have sperm with tails. But anyway, I'm just trying to show you that's as much. Now, if we cross these plants together, which Mendel did, what are our possibilities? Our possibilities are a lot greater. And if you take, Mendel had words for this, if you take a big T, little t plant and cross it with a big T, little t plant, this is called a monohybrid cross. He called this a monohybrid cross. Crossing those two. Because mono meaning it's only one trait, height. And hybrid meaning the genotype of this individual is a hybrid. It's the heterozygote. It's got a tall gene and a short gene. So a monohybrid cross is a cross between two heterozygotes. So if he crossed two of these together, he didn't call it a monohybrid cross. You know what he called it? Heterozygous. Dihybrid cross. Because they are heterozygous for two different traits, tallness and uh, pod color. And so this is a, this is, he called this a dihybrid cross. Now, what are all the possibilities
species of sperm cells for this dad. There's actually four of them. For which one? For this dad right here. T. Big T. Big, big G. T, big G. Big T, little G. Hold on. Big T, big G. Those two. Big T, little G. Big T, little G. Little, little G, big G. Little T, big G. Little T, little G. And little T, little G. There are four possibilities of gametes for this one. Does everybody see how that is? Each gamete gets one of the two from each pair. So there's four ways that these things can split up and make sperm cells. And then the book goes into a discussion on page 199 of why that is. Why these gametes can split up. And I want to show you what they're talking about there. Because the alleles are on the chromosomes. And I'm going to put these alleles on the chromosomes. Here, before we go through meiosis, we have chromosomes. Yeah. <clears throat> And remember, chromosomes are information that's inside a cell. And so the, these alleles, if you're wondering where is this T and G, where is it? It's information on the chromosome. This is DNA all wound up. And right about there on this chromosome is a gene meaning make the plant short. And of course, this chromosome copied itself exactly during interphase. So there's another copy right there next to it. And so right over here on this one is, a, is the tall gene, right about here on the chromosome. And there's the copy right next to it. You see? And over here on some different chromosome is the gene for green pods, and on the other one is the yellow pod gene. Are y'all following? So, when we go through meiosis, I'm going to run through the meiosis process real quick. Hopefully you already know this, how meiosis works. But remember the chromosomes pair up with their homologous pair. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Then in metaphase one, they line up in the middle. Then in anaphase, they split and go to opposite sides. And they could split up like this. That's one way they could split up. And when they eventually split again, in meiosis 2, they split like this. And the same thing happens over here. Ah! Oh! <laughs> one thing hard about these magnets. They want to fall off. And so you can see we end up with a sperm cell that's little t, little g, and a sperm cell that's big G, big T. That's this sperm cell and this <coughs> sperm cell. How about these two? Where do they come from? Well, let's go back and pretend we're in a different cell in the reproductive organ of this plant. And here's where independent assortment comes in. If you remember the process of independent assortment, these things will pair up during prophase one. They pair up. And then they line up in the middle, if you remember. And then they go to opposite sides. Go to opposite sides, and these don't have to go that way. These can go the other way. Remember that? And then when they separate again, you're going to end up over here with this sperm cell becoming a big G, little t sperm cell. And this sperm cell, when these split up, 
This sperm cell is the little g, uh, the big T little g sperm cell. So because of this independent assortment that we studied before, you can end up with all four types of sperm cells by the way you shuffle up the genes. This, one, this is one of the hardest concepts for kids. On the chromosomes, how are they, like if they're copied, I don't understand how when you separate them. Okay, during interphase, this one made an exact copy yeah. of itself. So this one, there's two little T's there. Yeah, but this is a different chromosome over here. Uh -huh. This is the, let's say this is the maternal and that's the paternal. Mm -hmm. This one came from the mom and it carries big T information. It carries tallness. Yeah. And this one carries shortness, little T's. But how does it make it different if they're all exact copies? They're not, they're not all exact copies. This one's different from that one. So, so this individual, this, this is a cell. Hold on. These chromosomes are in a single cell in a plant that's big T, little t, big G, little g. Mm -hmm. See, it has big T information and little t information. Mm -hmm. It has big G information and little g information. Yeah. When, I, when I move the chromosomes around, these, these things split up. And I make, and there's four different combinations of sperm cells. Did you see I just, I just moved them around? So sometimes we end up with it big T and a little g in a sperm cell, and sometimes we end up with a big T and a big G in a sperm cell. No? So just based on how they split up. What, what, what do you mean if, if what are exact copies? The chromosomes, like minus these two, or like what you just interface to it. Well, these two are exact copies of one another, but these aren't. Yeah. So, so, yeah, in, in meiosis, these two will split up, and you'll, this sperm cell will get this copy, and this sperm cell will get that copy, and yeah, those two are exact, but they're in different sperm cells. So, I get that, but I don't understand how they're going to be different. The, the, two, well, the two chromosomes are, are different. You know, one's got the big T, one's got the little T, and when they separate, um, oh, wait, I know what she was getting at. Um, She's saying if the two big T's separate and then the two little T's separate, how, you know, won't those two little T's just go with the big T's and they'll be, end up both big T, little T? No. Um, no, no, no. Let, let, let me show you. Let me show you again. Let's, let's split them up in meiosis. You ready? These things go to opposite sides, right? And these things go to opposite sides. And these things go to opposite sides. Now let's just deal with this side, okay? Forget about that side. So this will end up making, they're going to split again in meiosis 2. And both these sperm, this will make a sperm and that will make a sperm. The same. And, and they'll be the same. That's but, the, but they'll be different from these two sperm over here. Yeah, but those are the same too. Yeah, and these two will be the same. So you'll have two little g, big T, little g sperm and two little t, big g sperm. But this is just in one. This is just in one meiosis. the The plant is doing meiosis in thousands of cells, making thousands of pollen grains. And so, in a different cell inside the same plant, it could split them up the other way, where these little ones end up on this side, and these little ones end up on this side. And then, when they split up, now you got the other types of sperm: little t, little g and big T, big G. And that's independent assortment? Yes, independent assortment is the idea that these chromosomes can go either way. Yeah, you, get it. So you got it? They just randomize, so all those chromosomes are originally the same cell, and then it just randomizes, which, which break up into other cells. Every, every cell in the plant has 
a set of chromosomes like this. Now, a plant is made of million, hundreds of millions of cells, trillions of cells, okay? The cells in the plant's flower, some of them will break up and do meiosis and end up forming sperm and egg cells. And so in one, it shuffles up one way, and you end up with these types of sperm. And in a different cell, it shuffles up a different way, and you end up with these types of sperm. And then, so, so this plant has a bunch of these types of sperms and a bunch of these types of sperms, because it was doing this meiosis process over and over and over and over again. And then when Mendel takes his paintbrush, he gets all four types on the paintbrush. And he moves it over to the other flower, and it's kind of random which pollen grain comes in contact with which egg. Does this make sense? Okay? So, if you make, if this organism can make these four types of sperm, and this organism can make four types of eggs that are the same configuration because they have the same genotypes, you're going to end up with a rather large Punnett square. That has 16 boxes. Wait, how are you getting those egg cells from just one? This is the dad. And did you see how he can make these four no, no, no. types? Oh, wait, wait. Are those four egg cells matching up with the four sperm cells? Yeah. I, thought, yeah. I thought they were all coming from the first sperm. No. Sorry. Okay, this is the dad. He makes these four sperm yeah. cells. Okay, no, this is the mom. She makes these four egg cells. Okay. And so we just put them together in each square, which is, is a daunting task, which you don't want to do. Do y'all want to do this? Look at this. Big T, big T. Big G, big G. What's that going to be? Tall and, Tall and green. Big T, big T. Big G, little G. Tall and green. Tall and green. Big T, little T, big G, big G, tall and green. Big T, little T, tall and green. Big G, little G, tall and green. And you and you go and you go and do this for each one, and you can see they've already done it up here. You can see that we'll end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tall and greens. We'll end up with one, two, three tall and yellows. We'll end up with one, two, three short and greens, and one short and yellow. This is something you can just go ahead and memorize. In a die hybrid cross, you always get a nine to three to three to one ratio. Nine of the two dominant traits, tall and green, one of the completely recessive traits, short and yellow, and three tall yellows and three short greens. You don't ever have to do this cross if you remember it's going to be a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio in a dihybrid cross. Nine dominant. Can you go over which one is it? Two, three. Nine tall green. If you count them out, if, if you do this square and you count out the number of tall greens, I just did four of them. Here will be another one right here. Big T, big T. That's another tall green. If you do the whole square, you end up with nine tall greens. You see the nine tall greens up here? It's all the yellow boxes. You'll end up with one short yellow. That's this one in the corner. The little t, little g with little t, little g. That's the only short yellow right there. And you get three tall and yellow. Three tall yellow. And three short green. Three short green.
That's a nine to three to three to one ratio. Does this make sense? So the one and the nine to three to three to one ratio will always be the short yeah. The two recessions. Recession. So you get more of the dominance and less of the recessors. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So let me give you a problem that's not like this. What if I take a big T, little t, big G, little g, and I cross it with the little t, little t, little g, little g. What's going to be the ratio of the kids? So I'm taking a heterozygote tall green, and I'm crossing it with a short yellow. Will it be a 50-50? You have to do a Punnett square to see. Okay, now if you give us one like this, you do have to do the entire Punnett square, right? Well, you want you want to use your shortcut. I wouldn't, okay, well, I'm... I'll tell you what, I'll do it with you okay. this first time, and then I'll give you another one. <laughs> Here's what I do. This one right here can make four sperm cells, can it not? It can. We just went over that. A big T, big G, a big T, little g, a little T, big G, and a little t, little g, right? Mm -hmm. That's the four types of gametes this can make. So we'll put those at the top of our square. What kind of gametes can this make? Just oh, little t and little, little g. Little t, little g is all, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's all you need on this type of the side of the square. Oh, okay. This is what I'm talking about. you got to use your shortcuts. You don't want to write out four TGs because it's all the same. Can you go from there? Yeah. Yes. Combine them in these four boxes and tell me what you get. I'm going to come around and see if you're doing it right. I like cold time to actually do it. <laughs> Okay, you're just going go that way. That works. You combine the T's together and you combine the G's together. And then write down what the ratio is. I'm going to take six times. You can't figure it out? Oh, there's just like one each. Mm -hmm. Each individual gives you two of each letter. Isn't it just one to one to one to one? Mm -hmm. Figure out what each of them looks like and write it down. But they're all different. Yeah, you're going to get two tall ones. Okay. You're going to get two tall ones. I'm putting the tall first. Hold it down. Thank you. The high first and the color second. I got, I got one, tall, one, one tall, one green. One tall, one yellow. One short and green. Did you write down your percentages of your green outside? Yeah, me too. What do they look like? You guys got to write down. That's not right. Is this right? Oh, seven. Look at him again. Mr. Wills is right. Yes, that's right. This one right here is going to be big T, little t, big G, little g. And what color is that? Tall and green. It's tall and green. This one, big T, little t, little g, little g. <coughs> Tall and yellow. Tall and yellow. <coughs> this one, little t, little t, big G, little g. Short and green. Short and green. And this one, little t, little t, little g, little g. Short and yellow. Short and yellow. That is a one to one to one to one relationship. That's what they call that. Not a nine to three to three to one, a one to one to one to one. <laughs> you, okay, you want one here that I won't help you on? Yeah. Here we go. Cross me a big T, little t, big G, big G, with a little t, little t, big G, little g. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
First figure out the gametes. Then do your cross. That's right. That's right. You, you, you have to repeat it here. You did two of those when you only needed one of them. Mm -hmm. Now Totally stuck, yeah. totally stuck. Short 
Always so I can look at a problem like that and, and get one-to-one -one ratio just like that. I just have to look at it and I'm done. You, you can do that too. It's not that I'm some genius, even though I am. <laughs> it's a trick. And you can do that too. So if I gave you this problem, you ready? Big T, big T. Big G, little g. Cross with big T, little t, big G, big G. Hundred percent tall green. You didn't even have to do anything. We have two talls over here. You know the kid's got to be tall. We got two greens over here. You know the kid's got to be green. You liking this? I've got a practice problem sheet for you that has these problems on it and the answers on the back. And I want you to be trying these. And one of the front and left of them. I'll get one for you just so, okay. right at the end of class. What, say, say what? Do you want us to do this like for homework? Yes, I want you to be working on these for homework as you're reading, okay? You don't have to do them right now. But as we go through these, you're going to have to, there are, there are also practice problems in your book. If you look on page the bottom of page uh, 201, the bottom of page 199, there's little practice problems. I want to show you another, uh, and you can, uh, you can do these crosses not only with plants, but with fruit flies. Here are some crosses that uh, a guy named Thomas Hunt Morgan did with fruit flies that proved Mendel's laws correct. A uh, fly with long wings and gray body crossed with a short wing fly with black body. He got the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio in the F2 generation. And the book talks about those a bit. And here it is. You can see this cross here. This is your one to one to one to one that we just did. And I didn't get to the, the second part of the reading for 11.2. I didn't get to. Um, but I'll, I'll, start, I'll do it Monday. And um, so I want you to make sure to read 11.2 all the way through page 201. And we'll get to 202, okay? And try some of those practice problems.